First thing, ladies and gentlemen, we're not in Kansas anymore. There's a new norm out there. The new norm is data security. Data security and privacy laws are requiring more and more of settlement service companies, and they're requiring more and more that we protect the private and sensitive information that we traffic in. As real estate settlement companies, we do traffic in some of the most sensitive information on the planet. The Form 1003, for example, has everything in it that you wouldn't want anyone to know. So we have to take security of those documents seriously. The regulators are. If you want to see how seriously they're taking it, go to the F FTC website and Google data breach. And you'll see not only lenders, mortgage brokers, title underwriters, but you'll also see title and settlement firms listed there. Once you've been hit with a data breach, it's a different world. And you don't want to get there. You want to do everything you can to avoid that breach. The good news is that with our uh, e-learning courseware, you can learn the first steps to creating a secure culture in your company and get your staff to buy into this new culture of protecting uh, clients' secure data. In our firm, we have a golden rule of privacy, which is treat other people's sensitive data as you would have them treat yours. So if you're in a closing and you see somebody throw out an extra copy of somebody's mortgage application, maybe you should pick it up so it doesn't get traced back to your lender, client, and ultimately your office. Imagine this. I'm going to try and scare you straight now to wake you up. You get a letter one day, your largest referral source has just shut you down. Somehow a 500 document data breach has been traced back to your office. Now you've got no new traffic flow coming in and you've got three months before your pipeline's exhausted and you're finished. Just to give you an idea, the privacy industry estimates that each document that is the subject of a breach costs $200 in damages. So that 500 document breach just cost you $100,000 right off the bat. Add on to that, the forensics experts come in and figure out where the breach occurred and the defense attorneys. And now you've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in a company that's winding down. Quickly, your life's work is flashing before your eyes. Most of us have built our companies with our blood, sweat, and tears, and we have to protect it. The same way we protect it from other threats, we have to protect it, with it through these threats. And what we don't realize is that as our, cl as our clients expect us to be more technologically capable, with each technological advance, there are five or 10 more security issues we need to be mindful of and address it. I was just at a Department of Homeland Security cybersecurity conference, and an FBI and, and a Secret Service agent who were speaking uh, admitted that their mothers gave them a virus by sending them an email without realizing it. So it hits everyone. The good news is, if you take steps to become data secure, you have a very good chance of avoiding a data breach. And even if you do suffer a breach, at least you can show your clients you weren't sitting on your thumbs, you were taking steps to assure that one wouldn't happen. And when the FTC and the Attorney General show up in your office, you were able to show them that you were taking reasonable steps, which is what they expect from us. But you have to stay current in this, because what's reasonable today may not be reasonable tomorrow. Ten years ago, it wasn't reasonable for the FTC to expect us to be encrypting documents. Well, it is now. And in three or four years, what they expect as reasonable will increase even more. There's an unspoken pact in the title and settlement area uh, between us and the lenders and title underwriters. I think of the lenders and title underwriters as the two sons. And those two sons give us all the life, blood that we need, and all the light that keeps us going. And what do they expect from us? Well, in addition to superior customer service, local title and settlement knowledge, you as an owner actively managing your business to ensure there are no post-closing issues, you have to be transparent, you have to be technologically proficient. What they really want and expect at the end of the day is trust, absolute trust. Trust that you're not gonna steal their money and trust that you're not gonna lose their data and involve them in a data breach that has them on the cover of the New York Times. So, we have to protect that trust. But we've had a little issue in our industry. I like to think of us as the mortgage uh, and title vendor delivery system. We stand between those two sons and consumers. We've had an earthquake, and what that earthquake has been, you'll all hear more about over the course of these two days, is defalcation. The bad apples in our industry have threatened well, our delivery system. 
and they're making the banks wonder, is this a viable delivery system? Well, if on the heels of that, they start getting hit with data breaches, we're not leaving them many choices, are we? So we need to rebuild their trust, and we need to raise our bar, raise our standards, and demonstrate to them that we are a viable, caring, smart, and proactive uh, vendor delivery mechanism. Look at the mortgage broker industry. If you think this can't happen to us, between 2008 and 2009, the bad apples in the mortgage broker industry caused that industry to suffer a 70 to 80 percent market share loss. Could you imagine that happening in our industry? But we're teed up for it because we've already suffered through our colleagues defalcating client money, lender money, and now if we go through all these data breaches that we all seem to be like ostriches pretending that it doesn't exist, and if we have a second uh, earthquake in our industry, these national lenders and title underwriters will really question the viability of doing business with us. So, data security, it's really a negotiation of interests. Do I want to spend the money, time, and effort, or do I want to build and keep my client's trust and make sure everything I work so hard to build isn't lost? You have to juggle those interests. What I've done is bring together a group of leading experts. Professor Paul Schwartz is one of the, from Berkeley Law School, is one of the leading experts on data privacy and data security. He studied our industry, he studied the laws that apply to our industry. I've also brought on board Richard Purcell, Microsoft's first chief privacy officer, who designs eCourseWare for Oracle. He's worked with Department of Homeland Security and a number of Fortune 50 companies. And I've had Richard design our courseware specifically for your staff. And what the courseware, what courseware uh, educators will teach you is that you have 24 minutes to maximize retention and knowledge. So our courseware is 24 minutes. They'll also tell you it has to be engaging to have your employees absorb it. So what do we do? We take our courseware, takes your employees through the things they do every day. Processing loans, preparing closing documents, shipping out closing documents. The closing table itself, who is everybody, what do they do? On every page, uh, it's in flash, on every page they have to click through. And at the end, they have to do a data security assessment where they demonstrate to you as the owner or manager that they have proficiency in this area. What we try to do mainly with this courseware is get your employees to buy into this new hat they have to wear. They have to wear a data security hat. And they have to understand that this is now a part of the new norm. And that if they don't do this, that they'll lose their job and the company will go out of business. 